uh, so you've presented Tesla bot as primarily useful in the factory. First of all, I think humanoid robots are incredible from a, a fan of robotics. I think, uh, the elegance of movement that human, um, the hu humanoid robots, the bipedal robots show are just so cool. So it's, uh, really interesting that you're working on this and also talking about applying the same kind of all the ideas of some of which we've talked about with data engine, all the things that we're talking about with Tesla Autopilot, just uh, transferring that over to the just yet another robotics problem. I have to ask, since I care about human robot interaction, so the human side of that, so you've talked about mostly in the factory. Do you see it uh, also, do you see part of this problem that Tesla bot has to solve is interacting with humans and potentially having a place like in the home? So interacting, sure. not just, sure. uh, not replacing labor, but also like, I don't know, well, uh, I think being a friend or, or an assistant yeah, yeah. or something I, I th like that. I think the, the possibilities are, you know, endless. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's obviously like a, it's not quite in, in Tesla's primary mission direction of accelerating sustainable energy, but uh, it is a, an extremely useful thing that we can do for the world, which is to make a useful humanoid robot um, that is capable of interacting the, with the world and um, helping in in many different ways. Uh, so, certainly in, in factories and and really just just I mean I think if you say like uh, extrapolate to, to you know many years in the future, it's like I, I think uh, work will become optional. So. Like there's a lot of jobs that, if you if people if people weren't paid to do it, they they wouldn't do it. Like it's not it's not fun, you know, necessarily. Like if you're washing dishes all day, it's like, eh, you know, even if you really like washing dishes, you really want to do it for eight hours a day every day. Uh, probably not. So, um, and then there's like dangerous work, and basically, if it's dangerous, boring, uh, it has like p potential for repetitive stress in injury, that kind of thing, um. Then that's really where humanoid robots would add the most value initially. Um, so that's what we're aiming for is is to um, for for the humanoid robots to do, do jobs that people don't don't voluntarily want to do. Um, and, and then that, we'll have to pair that obviously with some kind of universal base, basic income in the future. Uh, so I think. Um, do you see a world when there's like hundreds of millions of Tesla bots doing different, performing different tasks throughout the world? Yeah, I haven't really thought about it that far into the future, but I, th I guess that there may be something like that. Um, so, I guess a wild question. So, the the number of Tesla cars has been accelerating. There's been I mean, close to two million produced. Many of them have autopilot. I think we're over two million now. Yeah. Do you think there will ever be a time when there will be more Tesla bots than Tesla cars? Yeah. I, 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 you know, actually, it's funny you ask this question because normally I do try to think pretty far into the future, but I haven't really thought that far into the future with the with the Tesla bot or it's codenamed Optimus. I call it, I call it Optimus Subprime. <laughs> 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 because it's not it's not like a giant you know transformer robot um so uh but it's meant to be a general purpose help help robot um and and basically like like the things that we're basically like like tesla i think um is the has the most advanced real world ai uh, for interacting with the real world, which we developed as a function of to to make self driving work, um, and so along with custom hardware and uh, like a lot of you know uh, hardcore low level software to have it run efficiently and be you know power efficient because, because you know it's one thing to do neural nets if you've got a gigantic server room with ten thousand computers, but now let's say you just you have to now distill that down into one computer that's running at low power in a humanoid robot or a car. Um, that's actually very difficult. A lot of hardcore software work is required for that. Um, so, so since we're kind of like solving the nav navigate the real world with neural nets problem for cars, which are kind of like robots with four wheels, then it's like kind of a natural extension of that is to put it in a robot with arms and legs uh, and actually, you know, actuators. Um, so. 
um like like the the, the two like hard things are like you, you basically need to make the have the robot be intelligent enough to interact in a sensible way with the environment um so you need real real world ai and you need to be very good at um manufacturing which is a very hard problem tells is very good at manufacturing and also uh, has the real world ai so making the humanoid robot work is uh basically it means developing custom uh motors and sensors uh that that are different from what a car would use um but we we've, we're also we have a, a um i think we have the, the 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 best expertise in developing advanced electric motors and power electronics so it, it just has to be for a humanoid robot application not a car Still, you do talk about love sometimes. So let me ask, this isn't like for like sex robots or something I like that. I love it's the answer. Yes. Uh, there is something compelling to us, n- not compelling, but we connect with uh, humanoid robots or even legged robots, like with a dog and sh- shapes of dogs. It just, it seems like, you know, there's a huge amount of loneliness in this world all of us seek companionship and with other humans, friendship and all those kinds of things. We have a lot of here in Austin, a lot of people have dogs. Sure. Um, there seems to be a huge opportunity to also have robots that decrease the, uh, the, the amount of loneliness in the world or help us humans connect with each, with each other. So in a way that dogs can. Um, do you think about that with Tesla at all or is it really focused on the problem of of performing specific tasks, not connecting with humans. Um, I mean, to be to be honest, I have not actually thought about it from the companionship standpoint. But I think it actually would end up being it, it could be actually a very good companion, um, and uh, it, it could I, it, you develop like a personality uh, over time that is that is like unique, like uh, you know, it's not like they're just all the robots are the same. And that personality could evolve to be, you know, uh, match match the 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 owner or the, you know, whoever, I guess the owner. Uh, well, uh, whatever same, you want to call it, uh, the other <laughs> the companion, the other the half, human. right? Uh, at the, in the same way that friends do. See, I think that's yeah. a huge opportunity. I think. Yeah, I, no, that's interesting. Like, like um, the because you know, like there's a. Uh, a Japanese phrase I like the uh, uh, wabi sabi. You know, uh, the subtle imperfections are what make something special. Yeah. And the subtle imperfections of the personality of the robot mapped to the subtle imperfections of the robot's human friend. <laughs> I don't know. Owner sounds like maybe the wrong word, but mm. um, could actually make an incredible buddy, basically. In in that way, the imperfections like R two D two or like a C three PO sort of thing, you know. So, from a machine learning perspective, I think the flaws being a feature is really nice. You could be quite terrible at being a robot for quite a while in the general home environment or all the, in the general world, and that's kind of adorable. And that's like those are your flaws, and you fall yeah. in love with those flaws. So it's it's a yeah, so it's very much. different than autonomous driving, where it's a very high stakes environment you cannot mess sure. up. And so it's yeah. yeah, it's more fun to be a robot in the home. <laughs> yeah, in fact, if you think of like uh, C three PO and R two D two, yeah, like they actually had a lot of like flaws and imperfections and yeah. silly things, and they would argue with each other. <laughs> And um, were they actually good at doing anything? <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. I, they definitely added a lot to the story, um, <laughs> but 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 there's there's sort of quirky elements and you know that they would like make mistakes and do things like it was like uh, it made them relatable. I don't know, um, enduring. So uh, so yeah, I think that that could be something that uh, pr- it probably would happen. Um, but our, our initial focus is just to make it useful. Uh, so so um, I'm confident we'll get it done. I'm not sure what the exact time frame is, but uh, like we'll probably have, I don't know, a decent prototype towards the end of next year or something like that. And it's cool that it's connected to Tesla, the car. So, so like, yeah, it's, it's, like it's using a lot of 
you know, it, it would use the autopilot inference computer and um, a lot of the training that we've done for the f for cars in terms of recognizing real world things could be applied directly to the to the robot. Um, so it, but but there's there's a lot of custom actuators and sensors that need to be developed, mm -hmm. and an extra module on top of the vector space uh, for love. No, uh, yeah, that's me saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay we can uh, add that to the car too that's true um that yeah, could be useful in all environments like you said a lot of people argue in the car so maybe we can help them out 